what I would like to say is that um, in uh, 2019, uh, we uh, demonstrated our resilience. We achieved all our financial targets while we continue to invest and even we have accelerated uh, our transformation in cockpit of the future and in uh, sustainable mobility. Um, you know, we uh, lost 5.8% of the market in uh, 2019 before 1.1 and this year, yes, I believe that we will be at minus uh, 3% with and China most probably at uh, minus 5%, which means that we will lose about 1 million to 1.2 million cars again in China. And in terms of your your China exposure, what does the coronavirus mean for you? Because I see in your guidance for 2020, it doesn't include the impact of coronavirus, but clearly this is going to have an impact on supply chains. For the moment, um, we are considering that we will have a first quarter, which will be significantly negative, double digit. We announced it. Um, and we uh, think that we will have a rebound afterwards, but we will be very prudent before understanding completely what's going on. You know, we have three issues. Uh, the first one, but which um, is uh, a minor one, we have a uh, problem with uh, our direct labor availability related to quarantine. This will end very soon. The second issue is related to the supply chain. We have out of 900 suppliers, about 39 suppliers, for which we need to find alternative solutions. And finally, we have a transportation uh, issue which is related to the borders between the provinces and um, uh, at uh, uh, the border of uh, the big cities. All of that we will be able to deal with it as soon as our customers will really have restarted. We have restarted this morning 45 of our 58 plants in China which is corresponding to about 70 percent of our global activity. Of course normalized activity. We are now at less than 50% of um, usage of our capacity. Uh, Patrick, um, Europe looks to be a bit of a drag, um, taking in that 6.2% uh, sales drop. I'm sorry, the 2.4% sales drop. I wonder if you could just talk a little bit about what the strategy is for Europe at this point, given there do seem to be some cyclical and structural headwinds for the auto sector. We, we have been conservative for Europe because we have no uh, clear understanding of uh, what the CO2 convergence will mean until the end of this year. You know that the European OEMs will have to achieve a uh, specific uh, CO2 uh, uh, target, which means that they will have to sell a considerable amount of uh, battery electric vehicles and plug-in hybrids. Um, they all have very uh, clear plans, but these plans are sales plans and, uh, um, you know, there's an uncertainty about uh, the materi materiality, materiality. So we have to wait, I think, until the second quarter to have a better view of um, what uh, will be the figures in Europe. Which is fascinating because it seems that you're, you've got weak visibility around Asia given coronavirus. You've, you've got weak visibility around uh, regulation in Europe. Um, what then does that mean for um, CapEx and your intentions perhaps to uh, compensate shareholders through the, the rest of 2020 here? It means that you need to, again, have a resilience plan, and we have one. We demonstrated last year that we were able to implement it very quickly. So we haven't waited. In fact, we have implemented this plan uh, as soon as we uh, finished our budget exercise at the end of last year. Um, we have, you know, to uh, uh, run the company as um, if uh, uh, the drop of volumes would be effective, and we do it from the first day of the year. It means that, of course, CapEx, it means that uh, SGNAs, it means that fixed costs have to be uh, very carefully monitored. i give you one example. We have in our plans today about 19% of temporary workers, which is allowing us to adapt to um, the volumes very quickly. Um, Patrick, just one more question from me. Um, obviously, we're watching the PSA-FCA deal 
wind its way through various processes at this stage, given that they are the majority owner, PSA, of, of your business. What ultimately happens to you if that deal is consummated? PSA has announced that they will spin off um, and that they will distribute uh, their uh, Forestia shares to their shareholders. And this uh, uh, will happen a few weeks before they will uh, close their deal with um, FCA. So what does it mean? It means that we will have a significant amount of our free float, which is positive, and that we will have three new shareholders, ma uh, main shareholders, um, and uh, the shareholders are the Peugeot family, uh, the French state, and Dongfang, each of them having about 5% of the Forestia shares. Hi, I'm Joanna Bersacci, and thank you for watching. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.